Um, how to start? I fell in love. Yeah, I reckon just start there, bro. <laughs> I fell in love. Yeah, I did. I fell in love. Um, he doesn't want anything to do with me. But I fell in love, and I'm going to explain it. Thank That's you to right. Brisbane for coming. Maybe he's playing hard to get. Thank you to Brisbane for coming to my show and Gold Coast. Yeah, and Gold Coast, obviously. Yeah, thank you to both people that came to my show, both both cities, both countries. Bye, bosses. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the show there was this guy. Yeah. At my Brisbane show, and I said, "Is anyone gay?" And he was with two mates, and they went, "This guy's gay," like that. And I, I couldn't really see him from the back. I was like, "Oh, whatever." Anyway, show ends. And I'm chained to everyone and they come on and I see him and I'm like, wow, so my type. Yeah. Attractive as fuck. And I was like, oh, dude, like, are <laughs> you, so. and I was like, are you actually gay? Because I wasn't even really getting gay vibes from yeah, him. So okay. I thought it was a joke, like, because a lot of straight guys will come as mates and I'll be like, yeah, who's gay? And then I'm like, oh, are you actually after the show? They're like, no, I was kidding. Yeah, a bit of Reese Bros energy. Fuck them. Yeah. Major <laughs> Reese Bros energy. Yeah. Um. Well, not that Reese Bros have pretended to be gay for me, but they do do shit things like that. But anyway, um, and I was like, oh, like, are you actually gay? And he goes, yeah, I am. And I was like, holy shit. And then we were chatting to show, and I was like, do you mind if, and he was where I fucked it. Okay. Oh, fuck. I wish I could go back. Okay. So I said, uh, what's your Insta? Oh, so you cracked onto him at the show. I was like, can I get your Instagram? He was like, yeah, of course. So then anyway, and I'm like, okay, yeah, sweet. And then I was too awkward to get my phone out. And I was, cause I was like chatting. There was like a huge line of people. And I was like, yeah. And then his mate interrupted. I was like, yeah, change to change. And then I was like, fuck, all right. Well, yeah, see you guys later. And then I gave him a hug and I was like, I'd, I'm back in Brisbane this week and I'd love to take you out for a date. God. And he was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. And I was like, sweet. And I was like, message me on Insta. Like, message me on Insta. And he was like, yeah, I will, I will. Anyway, I'm waiting all oh, night for Oh, you would have been checking your request nonstop. No bro. message. <laughs> then one of his mates messaged me. And I was like, cheers for coming, blah, blah, blah. Also, tell your mate, like, I thought it was really cute. And would Fucking love to speak Tripling down. No. <laughs> Quadrupling Wait. down. And then his other mate messaged me. And I was like, cheers for coming, bro. That's so sick. What was your mates at? Fuck, bro, it's getting a bit Desperado vibes. Of course it is. And then he sent me the ad. And then I went to add him. He only has 50 followers. And he only follows 40. So he was, he's giving not much on Insta, obviously. I think that's a red flag. Of course it is, that little. Anyway, it turns out, well, he hasn't accepted my request. But the fact he doesn't have many followers, he probably hardly uses it. You know what I mean? But when's he going to? Probably once you leave Brisbane again. I reckon. I'm just really noisy. I'm thinking maybe he's going to message me later in the week, close to the date, maybe. Hope so, but I, I should have asked for his number. I just, no, I don't think it's, I, I don't think there's been a mix up on Instagram here. I think it's like, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think it's because he didn't get his number. I think it's maybe he's choosing to not engage in this. And I, that hurts for me to say, because you're such a good guy and you but deserve love you and something? happiness. He seemed really keen. Yeah, but everyone seems keen in person. The girl, the the pub seemed keen and then she gave me a fake number. You know what I mean? Like people seem keen. Well dude. then get this cunt it's in the really, fucking Oscars. It's really fucking awkward. Get him to, to the Oscars. It's really awkward to reject someone in person. Like it's awkward to ask someone out in person. It's even more awkward to reject them in person. Yeah. You know what I mean? So much easier to just do what he's done. Look, I'm- Now I, I hope he turns around and sends you a cockpit. I hope he turns around and backs into me. And I hope it's medium sized. I'd be backs into me, but I don't think these, you know, these hopes are ridiculous. Yeah, look, I just think I wasn't meant to be. He's clearly not interested and that's totally fine. I've got one more fifth double down up my sleeve. Oh no. You're not going to ask at our show, is he? Are you? I was going to say to one of his mates, I've got two tickets if you want to bring so-and-so. <laughs> is that too much? So you're going to be taking money out. You're going to be taking money out of my pocket. No, it's already sold tickets. out. I was just going to give them two extra tickets that don't exist. All right, do it. No way. Oh, it's so fucking desperate, but... Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it later in the week. If you do it, it's got to be to the second show, so then you can mingle after. Yeah, 100%. Fuck, that's red hot. Oh, I'm so annoyed at myself. Right, what do you do if we've got a parcel sent to us? What do you do if we open it? It's like a big love letter from him. Let's open it right now. Well, what if it's a big love letter from him? Well, then that's all I need. Okay. Bit of postage. I'll open a little bit, then you open a little bit. You just open it, lad. Okay. Um. Also, can we... Wait... Will, can we give the Addy for people so that they can send us stuff? Or is, is this like a DL Addy? 
Okay. If you want to send us something, it's 29 slash... Oh, wait. 1 slash 29 to 33 Birmingham Street, Alexandria, New South Wales, 2015. 2015. 1 slash 29 to 33 Birmingham Street, Alexandria, New South Wales, 2015. 2015. Yeah. Well, before, while you're opening that, I just want to give a shout out to Jack Marengo because we are going to put a shelf up. I may, may need to bring it for the last month, but I've forgotten. Jack gave me a Guinness World Records official certificate <laughs> for the largest foreskin. <laughs> now that's going to sit well behind there. So we're, we're building up a nice little collection here. If you'd like Send, to add to it. You know what I really want? Can I just ask for some things? I want lollies. I want chockies. I want lollies. Okay. That's what I really want. Please send me lollies and chockies. Thank you. Or c- cookies. All right, just give me the box, cunt. Cookies, lollies, chockies, anything sweet. I'm not eating anything food-wise. Please. In case someone poisoned please. What if someone poisoned it? No. No one would do that. Please, please, guys. Hey, Pat and Will. Oh, fuck me. Fuck me. Hey, what Pat and it? Will. Absolutely love the podcast. We hope you love these shades and matching bucket hats just as much. That's not lollies. We heard that you were both looking to elevate your styles. Nah, mate. My style's that good, but Will does. Hopefully, our accessories can have a helping hand. All right. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Blink is the brand. If this bucket hat fits my head... Blink is the brand. You're the only hat I'll ever wear again in the rest of my life. That's how Put certain. It right now. That's how certain I am that this hat won't fit my head. Okay. I've there's <laughs> been wait, one. I'm looking at it now. There's been it could fit. <laughs> there's been one hat in my life that's fit my head. Bro. Oh, this won't fit. Fuck this it, won't, won't fit, fit bro. <laughs> It's semi. <laughs> Look at that, bro. I've got the fattest head, lad. Bro, that works, bud. Bro, my, you, you know what this feels like? I feel like I've got a pimple at the top of my head and I'm pushing so hard to pop it. That's me pushing oh. it down. And if I just like try to wear it normally. <laughs> it's just so right, fucked, This is bro. terrible audio. People have to make bigger hats. No, well, if you're listening on audio, get on YouTube, you dumb cunt. Oi, oi. Oh, please and send lollies, pick, please. They've picked out Sunnies and for chocolate you and, and that stuff. they think will suit Cookies. you and Sunnies that they think will suit me. Okay, this will be funny. Wait, are you sure this... Oh, this says Will on it. Oh, whoa. Very Jack Sapono. Shout out to Blink. No, I. Blink. Blink. Thoughts? Mm, maybe not with the brown. Well, no but shit, But I don't mate. mind just it. Thoughts? Awful. Just for you. Like, they're, they're cool sunnies. Fucking oh, they're cool sunnies. Oh, no, bro. yes. Like for you, yes. They're really cool. What about these for me? Ooh, Do puppy. I look good? I'm going to wear these for the rest of the show. They look fucking sexy, lad. Thanks. Oh, I like the look. Of, okay, I really like the look of these. I just don't really suit sunnies. And I've got a fat head, as we just discussed. So, they, they look a bit small. They look really good. They've okay. actually done really Be well. Be honest, Kyle. No, they're actually good. I really Guys, like this is just the worst episode. The Uber Eats has arrived. <laughs> That's our Uber Eats arrived. And shock what we'll order. I bet you are. I'm going to guess what we'll ordered because you, you didn't tell me what you were getting, actually. I mean, you got a fuck ton of lollies. I'm going to be feeling a little bit of sweets. I'm going to check myself out on the Camry because I reckon I look fucked. I look kook. <laughs> yeah, Will's saying you look like a blind <laughs> I do guy. look a little bit blind, eh? I do look a bit blind. They're really nice sunnies. They're a nice style, but I just don't really suit shit. I've got a very particular style. Like I said, they just look a little bit small on my head. But shout out to the Blink team. My big overly fucking hat. Um, I just want to say while Will's out of the room, I'm not sure if it's going to pick up on this podcast, but his autism has been through the roof today. Like, severely. So just, just make note of that, because to see if it's continued on. And so much so, we might have to snip this out of the podcast, but Will yelled... Thanks, lad. Will yelled something out at me at EQ at lunch, and I yelled back, shut up, you autismo. And to the right of me was a group of special needs on an excursion. So I took a bit of an L there. Now, I don't know if that can go public. Does that make me a bad person? No, it doesn't, because Will is actually autistic, and I was just calling him what he is. I wasn't bagging out autistic people does anyone want a snake i've got lollies this is going to be terrible listening for all of you guys at home got one probably even worse watching after my mandarins i'll have some bro okay 
Back on topic. This guy, do we think he has any interest in me? Do you Fuck reckon he's no. just really busy and forgot? Do you think he's not a small talk person? What do you think? What do you mean a small talk? He hasn't even begun talking, lad. There's not even any talk, let alone small. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. We can't eat and talk, can we? No. No, we'll do it anyway. So, I think you give up hope. Is it so scat? <laughs> Kyle's telling us we can't eat and talk. I'm going to eat and talk. Okay. Do I look like a mong right now? On a scale of one to mong. <laughs> this is the worst episode. One of the Gallagher brothers if he was blind. I don't know who that is. Oasis? God, you're young. I'm, I'm, a, I'm young, wild and free, baby. Anyway, Noah, tall, if you're rich out and, there. I'm tall, rich and handsome. If you're out there, Noah, I'm thinking of you. Is that, do you reckon that would drive you away from someone? What that I would borderline done? make me get an AVO. Oh, fuck. And I've had some fuck shit done to me and I've never got an AVO. And that, oh, that would nearly make me get one. Can I talk about my tour a bit more? Mm, go for it. I'm going to keep eating. Okay, eat away from the mic. So, the Gold Coast. Thank you so much for coming. I started in the Goldie. Can you not raffle bags and stuff? I went to the Gold Coast. Thank you to the Goldie for coming out. That was um, an interesting show. Um... Yeah, I just think, I don't know. The setup was strange. It was too, it was very, well, I hate long rooms. You know that about me. I hate deep long rooms to perform in. And it was one of those. You like width. I like width. Bit of girth. Yeah. Um, but it was still a really fun show. And then Brisbane just like slapped. Brisbane was so fun. I do quite enjoy Queensland. Up in the Gold Coast, if you stay around Burley Heads, Nobby Beach area, it's actually really nice. Beautiful part of the world. Beautiful. Just not not surface paradise away from that area. That's oh, disgusting. Heaven. No, disgusting. Heaven. The Burley Heads type place is really nice. Burley Heads is nice, but they didn't let Jaden Lang in because he had neck tats. Well, they were also a bit racist because a white guy walked in with neck tats. They didn't. No, care. a white girl walked in with a big sleeve. No, no, a, a white guy went in with neck tats and he did, and they didn't care. I think a white guy with neck tats is 10 times more etched than a Samoan or Tongan or Islander with neck tats. Because a lot of the Islanders, they like have meaning behind them. Whereas a white guy is just like a fuck it, I'm going to get a neck tat thrown on. You know what oh. I mean? Way more dangerous. You can be a really nice, not saying people with neck tats can't be nice, but like an Islander, if it's like a family tradition and, and it means something to you, then they get it on. You know what I mean? Whereas a white guy kind of gets it to be intimidating. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Sure. Can I ask you a question? Please. So I, um, fuck, I forgot the question. No, I actually swear to God, I Come totally on, forgot bro. it. We got to pull our shit together here. This has been an awful Yeah, yeah, listen. this has been a really bad episode. I'm so sorry, guys. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I See, that's what I, he's been really autistic today. That's what I mean. Can you start a different combo? Because I yeah. actually feel like I need- All right, I'm going to start a different combo. I'm going to think of the So question. right now- as of this week, it started on Monday, the swimming trials are on, right? So what it is, is to pretty much qualify for the Olympic Australian swimming team. Now- S Sorry, the, Sam Fricker. He's a diver, lad. No, but he didn't make it. Yeah, because he's, he's a diver. Completely know, different sport. Sam Fricker? Completely different sport. I'm so sorry, brother. So, the thing- Bit of an L on your behalf, lad. The thing is- Sorry, bro. These cunts trained for like- since they're kids to make it. And like, say you play AFL or cricket or NRL, like there's an easier way to measure success in those sports. Whereas with swimming, it's kind of like, no one knows who you are unless you go to the Olympics, right? I'm sure there's other tournaments that they care about. Let's be real. Most of Australia don't give a fuck. I love the Olympics. I love swimming. Australian notoriously very good swim team, potentially our best ever this year. So I've been told. Whoa. But imagine the fucking nerves, brah. Your whole life comes down to one race to qualify. If you don't swim in a certain time or come in like the top two, then you just don't make the team. It's as simple as that. That's simple. Can you imagine the pressure on that? You know what I mean? At least like in a, say the NRL is kind of like, oh, okay, I didn't get picked this week. Might get picked next week. Mm. This is like, I've got to train another four years for cunts to know me. Maybe five years. Olympics every four years, brother. Okay. Let's have another pandemic again. But don't you reckon that's pretty etch? You imagine the nerves before it? Imagine this. You ready for this one? Yeah. Chuck us the snakes, but. Or a false start. That's what my mum said. Because I've been watching it with my mum. 
And she's like, imagine one of them fucking false started, bro. That's the biggest L I can think of is a false start. Well, there's not one orange snake in this whole packet. There's one. That's embarrassing. I ate one as well. There's green ones in there. But yeah, but is it lime or green apple? Green apple. Yuck, bro. Get That's out of here. That's lime. What? Anyway, got me thinking. When I was in primary school, there were nine guys in my year. And I was kind Gosh. of the only sporty one, right? So I'd have to compete in like... Like at the athletics carnival, I'd win. Swimming carnival, I'd win. All this shit. But then you'd have to go to the next level where you'd verse other schools. Mm. And they were all athletes. And I wasn't... You know what I mean? I was, like I was faster than the nine other guys in my year, sure. Why was it such a small school? I don't know, bro. There so one nine time of I'm, you. What sort of special ed school were you in? There was nine of us in our primary school. You went to an all-boys school, probably jerked each other off in the bathroom. Hang on. What are you talking about? You're all boys. There's nine boys. There's probably more of you. There were nine boys in my year at primary school. How many girls? Oh, right. Girls. How many girls? I don't know how many girls. I don't know. Well, you fucking know the amount of guys, you gay lord. You're counting them. Because I remember, I remember that specifically. No shit. Anyway. Mr. Nine. So I win the swimming carnival. Not a, you know, I'm a, I can swim, but I'm not a fucking notorious you're swimmer. Not, you're not that good at swimming. When so, have you seen me competitive, competitively swim? We've raced. No, we I never have. fucked you. Remember? We have never raced in swimming. Yeah, we did. When? Royal Sydney. We raced at Royal Sydney. I've never swum at Royal Sydney. I bummed you. I have never. I didn't even know Royal Sydney had a pool. Do we swimming race? Is that our next like bet? No, because I reckon I'd beat you. No, no, you would. I, I would fuck you, and you know that. Yeah, probably you. You would fuck me. You fucking. Anyway, I went to the next stage of this thing where I'm competing against other people. And I remember practicing in my backyard. I used to have a 10 meter pool and me and my dad were like mapping out plans of how to do this 50 meter swim. And I get called to the blocks and this little cunt next to me, they all had like skin swimmers on, like down to your knees. I just had speedos on, bro. And this cunt yeah, next to me is like doing these stretches, doing this and he goes, oh, how many times a week do you train? And I was like, train? I was like, I don't. And he just laughed. I was like, oh, what about you? And he goes, seven. Bro, every cut I'm versing are professional swimmers. Where is he now? Does he have a Fuck podcast? Fuck knows, bro. Probably listens to us. Anyway, I ended up coming fourth, which isn't bad. But like, could you, like, I was, I, that's probably where my anxiety stemmed from, those, those blocks. Fucking hell, your anxiety now imagine about to go mushies, for fucking, anxiety is extended from swimming. And now imagine about to go do it for the Olympics. Mm. Pretty fucked, right? Really fucked. Really fucked. Um, congratulations to everyone that made it. Felix, do you want a snake? Congratulations to, um, oh, we've got a gun swimmer, bro. Ariana Titmus. Ariana Titmus is going to, I reckon, bring home some gold for Australia. Good on her. Olympics is my favorite thing, bro. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. I love watching the Olympic Games. It's so fun. Yeah, it's good. Do you watch them? Yeah, uh, not really. It's pretty annoying it's in Paris, bro. A bit of a time difference. Can I tell you guys something? What's the time difference to Paris, Kyle? Can I guess? Yeah. I'm going to guess it's 16 like, hours. Yeah, I was going to say 16 hours. I reckon they're 16 hours behind us, the slow cunts. I reckon um, they're nine hours behind us. They're eight hours behind us. Not Woo! as slow as I thought. I'm French. Can I tell you something? Mm. So I'm going to... I was attacked today by Jackson Fairbairn, who... I actually found out is recently he's trying to quit nicotine. Yeah. So well, they, that's why he's a little testy cunt at the moment, snapping at me quite aggressively this morning. Mm. I got snapped at quite a bit, which is fine. Uh, we all like to snap. I will admit you've been in a fucking mood, but you've been a very easy to snap at today. No, I haven't. You have, bro. You've been having outbursts. Outbursts? I'm not some escaped mental patient. It fucking seems like it today. Go on anyway. I made an innocent opinion that I found a sport more boring than basketball. And that's mm. the Formula fucking one. That okay. is the worst. Let me explain why this is my take. And then we can disagree or agree. Everyone says it's car racing, right? They race against each other, whatever. From what I was told, I could be completely wrong. 
They do a qualifying race round. Yeah, to see what position and you And that start. determines what position you start yeah, in. Like if you get pole position, you're cruising. You know and then I mean? you get pole position, and then you're just you're, you're just going to win the race, basically. And then the person who doesn't get a very good qualifying race there at the back, they're just fucked. Like you, you have no chance of winning. What the hell is the point? Get rid of the qualifying. That's boring. No one wants to qualify. Well, then how do you determine who starts where? Oh, I've got an idea. Build a wider track, you fucking idiots. Build a long, wide track that can fit more cars. What, you think we're doing? Yeah, but then what about the car who's starting on the outside? Then you design it so that the car on the outside gets inside turns. The fucking 400 meter race sorted this shit out back in the Olympics. Literally ancient Greece Olympics times. Imagine we watched racing and it was just one yeah, but little cause, lane cause in and people jogging behind each other. Because in the 400 other. meter, you got to stay in your lane the whole time. This that is, What I imagine Formula One is just- No, but just, that, you've just completely fucked your example. No, I'm not a huge Formula One fan. No, but what but do you that's mean? that's just fucking- What do you mean? It's like the 400 meter race. They have to stay in their lane the whole time. So what, they're going to put a fucking kilometer wide V8 racetrack no. with lines in it and you can't leave your line. Yeah. Because it's already that anyway. The road is is a car length anyway. The road is a car sport, length. Bro. Okay, listen, you're embarrassing yourself. I don't think it's a good sport, but you got to come in with facts if you're going to... I came in with facts. You came in with complete... Have you seen how narrow bullshit. the road gets? Yeah, I reckon you could fit at least five, six cars. Can you look up the width of a Formula One You could not car? fit five or six cars if, width-wise. If, it was, if, the, if the whole race was one car length width, no one would be able to go past each other. <laughs> exactly, no, not the bro. whole race. But what <laughs> I'm saying is... So it just goes narrower and wider. Also, aren't you not even allowed to overtake? You have to, like, give a... You have to, like, send a thing like I'm about to overtake you then the person has to like semi pull over nah bro I think that's like what happens on just like a normal highway bro I don't think in V8 racing you gotta put your blinker on anyway it's boring as shit watching the same oh, cars boring. drive around and around how about this add a gun on the front of the car and people can kill each other then I'd watch it I just think you gotta come a bit better prepared if you're gonna slander I'm a just sport. speaking passionately do we know how wide it is Kyle's caught lacking on the job. Fucking tugging his penis off over there. I'm having a jump. Is this right one? <laughs> no, we can't keep eating on the podcast, bro. I've got a quest it's, bar. It's 12 metres wide, every, at, like, the whole time. 12 metres wide. That's five to six cars. No. Yes, a car yeah. would be, like, two metres wide. Yum, bro. Look Drew, would a car bar. be two metres like, wide? Yeah, three, two or three metres, probably. Yeah, exactly, bro. All right, then I'm an idiot. Fucking oath you are, but you can have your opinion, but you gotta you gotta come with you can't make up facts to try attack I agree. something. You always come at me for throwing out statistics, at least mine are true. No, you just got I reckon eighty percent of gay people don't want to get married, or you just say something like I've that. I've never said that before, bro. Look, you, you just what, say what stats. The fuck? I've never I have never said that before. No one said that, but you're just like I reckon seventy percent of blah is blah. Yeah, I give my opinion on percentages of things. Anyway, let's take a somber turn. Let's have a minute. Nah, not a minute. That's boring. Let's have 10 seconds silence. No. Yes. I want to talk about- I'm fucking talking about my dead dog, you sad cunt. Be quiet for 10 seconds. <laughs> my dog just died. How? Got put down. L. So I got two dogs, Rosie and Lulu. Rosie's my staffy and poor old Lulu got put down. <laughs> That's not even fucking funny, bro. No, it's not. You've got some shitty little dogs, bro. Laverne and Shirley. No, I know it's the, really the sad. Shittest Why is dogs Felix ever. They've laughing? got these long ears that Why hit the floor. Why is Felix laughing? They've got because you're sad. laughing, bro. No, I'm not. Look at him. Look at his face. Look, he's straight at straight. Fucking sorry for your loss. When have you said sorry? Huh? <laughs> you're holding back. You're holding back laughter. I said sorry when I met the fucking rat thing for the first time. I said sorry. You have to deal with this. So more of a congratulations that it's fucking. Well, no, done. she's been a part of the family for twelve years, and I found out because my sister posted an Instagram story saying "rip," oh. and I was like, "Are you taking the fucking piss? Our dog's dead." <laughs> and she's like, "Yes." Yeah. So then I get home, and you know, dads are like, they they never want the dog, but then they ended up being closest with the dog. And this was actually sad, bro. I get home and I'm like, hey, dad. And he doesn't know I know. And he's like, hey. I was like, how's your day? He's like, oh, I was all right. And I was like, oh, fuck. Dad's a bit rattled by this. Me and my dad aren't best at, you know, talking to each other about these kind of things. So we just Shock. go our separate ways. Oh, and then he comes out st upstairs and he's like, oh, you know, Lulu got put down. And I was like, yeah. And it sounded like he'd been crying. 
Oh. And I was like, oh, fuck. I've seen Chris my dad cry you. once in his life, ever. Never and seen I was my like, dad cry. Oh, fuck. And he's like, I was like, you were right? He goes, no, not really. <gasps> it's like, I'm, it's really sad. And I was like, oh. And then I stood there for like 10 seconds like, do I hug him? Like, what do I do? Yes. I just walked into my room. Oh. I, feel, I feel so bad for my- What the fuck? I feel so bad Mr. for my Mental dad. Mr. Mental Health? You don't even know how to talk to an old man. Oh, I don't know, bro. Me and my dad aren't great. I don't know. It's a bit hypocritical, it is. Anyway. So no, it sounds like you're not great. No, we're both not great with that kind of stuff. So to each other. Please have a bite of this. To each other. But- um, That's one of the most delicious. Do you like cinnamon? Yeah. Pretty yum. I'll finish it. Can I have one more bite and then you can finish it? I'll have one more bite, you finish it. Yeah. So, poor old Lulu gets put down. I feel bad for everyone involved, but I feel bad particularly for my dad. <laughs> I, feel, I bad. feel bad for everyone involved. This is an oppressed came in to be about origin. I feel bad for my dad. I feel bad for Rosie, my staffy. Cause she's just walking around sad as fuck, man. Awful. Since Rosie's been alive, she's known Lulu. Oh, and I feel bad for Mimi because Mimi's obsessed with Lulu and keeps oh, asking about Mimi her. doesn't know, like, really. Let's be real. You could die, and Mimi wouldn't know what happened. Let's she be. No, she's not. Did you know that every time she comes to my house, she asks for her, and now she's not there. It's sad. <laughs> That's actually. Can you film that and send it to me, bro? You've got the shittest dogs. I don't care. They've got long eyelashes. I'm not, gonna, I'm not defending They're my dogs. Ugly as fuck, and you're a heartless so cunt. You're soulless. Can I say this? No, you can't say shit. You're pissing me off there with your little fucking glasses on. You've got a fucking real temper today. No, I a don't. Real attitude. Well, I got. Hey, M Kyle, admit right now. <laughs> yeah, you think you're some sick cunt there with your fucking glasses, bro? Shove them up your ass. I've been in You'd a good mood. You probably fucking like that. Oi, none of that. No, I'll fucking do plenty of it. I want. I uh, can I say rest in peace. Rest in peace, Lulu. You brought so much joy and happiness to the Clifton family. Thank you. And you're up in heaven, and you're living an amazing life, and you're over. The, I hate when people say over the rainbow bridge. That's gay. Pat, mm. can I explain death to Mimi, please? No, you can't explain death to Mimi. Mimi cries when she sees you. Can I talk shit on something? Depends what it is. You're going to hate me for this. Then don't do it. Because <clears throat> you're pissing me off. You don't want to piss me off more. Actually, I'm going to go specific. I'm going to go specific. I'm actually... this. What I'm about to say, guys, this could actually cause real life ramifications for me. <laughs> then why say it? Because I'm in a silly mood. <laughs> Fucking Oprah, you're in a mood. My, one of my sister's best friends got engaged recently. Congratulations to her. But what I want to say... You ain't getting engaged anytime soon, you fucking lonely, sad cunt. Is interesting. So my sisters, they've been best friends, like they're always hanging out together. She then posted... Oh, wait, so it's not going to aggravate me? No. Oh, sweet. Play no, because my thing was, I find it, the, the couple, like, engagement photos, I always laugh at them. I'm always like, this is cringe. No one really cares other than a few people, you know. I like when I see them. That's so nice. Anyway, she posted a reel of her FaceTiming all of her friends. And I Charlotte. love those. Yeah. I, lo I love the pregnancy one. Charlotte wasn't included. And this is her supposed best oh. friend. Is it bleep the name? Is it No. Oh, I thought that was her best friend. No. Get ready to bleep. No. Anyway. Charlotte's supposed best friend doesn't include her. So did Charlotte find out through Through the... an Instagram post. Now- They're not best friends, bro. Does that mean they're not best friends? Now, I don't, I don't want to throw Charlotte under the bus here. Charlotte's not actually said anything to me about this. So I can't confirm nor deny what Charlotte's thoughts are. Because I haven't Well, maybe Charlotte found out in person or something. Okay, I won't lie. I know for a fact that Charlotte found out through the Instagram <laughs> post <laughs> because I'm the one who sent it to her. <laughs> so that's, t can I just say this? <laughs> Let me say this. What a fucking L. Let me say this. Can you imagine you found out I got engaged to an Instagram post? This pod's getting burnt down. Oh. Let me tell you something right now. 
as close as they are, if anyone in my close friend circle, I'm talking my top 15 to 20 friends, does not FaceTime me or tell me before an Instagram post goes up, one of their shitty Instagram posts with the date, 9th of the 7th, 26, 47. What, you're trying to remember the date you married the most fucking boring person in the world? Good on you. Anyway, regardless, I wasn't talking about them, by the way. That was just a thing that I said. That had nothing to do with the people before. Anyway, what I want to say is... Um, I would not go to the wedding. I'd be furious. One of my best friends, Hugo, he told me he was going to do the engagement. Yeah. My friends who have been engaged, I knew it was coming. He went, I'm actually going to go. And, he, and then he sent me the video and then he posted it. He showed it to me in person. I was in the loop. And me and Hugo see each other probably once every few months. Mm, to play games. Yeah. But we mean a lot to each other. Absolutely. you got a great friendship. And he's the sweetest boy man in the world. I really like, I've saw, I saw the pregnancy one. Fuck, they did it well. The, the girl was in a green dress for some of it. And it was like, they're taking a photo and they'd be like, three, two, one, say Jess is pregnant. And they'd be like, Jess is pregnant. And then midway through saying it, they'd fucking realize. And it was like, it was one of the oh, best and videos And the grandma didn't get it. Have you seen that? The dumb old fucking grandma sitting there like, <laughs> I don't get it. I'm like, euthanize that dumb cunt, you know? Euthanize her. Like, actually put her down before the wedding. <laughs> you really have to bring up putting things down. Um, Pat's dog got put down. Yep. Don't, don't you fucking laugh as That's well. That's fake. <laughs> don't, don't, don't laugh. You're don't. laughing as well. What's so funny? You were holding back laughter. Everyone in here's laughed. No, you, Bert. Alleg- you were- <laughs> Allegedly. You're a sicko, mate. Uh, the night before, I was actually playing a game with my friend saying how much to, it's like how much, and and he was like, how much to kill your dog? And I was like, I wouldn't. And the next night he messed me going, that's so heavy, bro. You didn't even get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, fuck you. Fuck you, Toops. But anyway, yeah, she's dead. <laughs> Um, I've got a riddle for you, Pat. Okay, bro. Are we ready for this? Play along at home if you want. Uh, very exciting. This is a fun little riddle. And it goes like this. A man is locked in his room with nothing but a bed and a calendar. How does he survive? Would you like me to say it again? Mm, a bit slower, please. A man. Not that, not that slow. A man is locked in his room. Mm. And you know what? I don't want you to get confused. Just it, fucking say it. A man is locked in his room, a room. A man is locked in a room with nothing but a bed and a calendar. How does he survive? He ate the dates from the calendar to survive. And? Is that it? Yeah. Fuck off. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Yeah, that's part one. What the fuck? Okay. He ate the dates from the calendar to survive and it was a water mattress. His bed's a water mattress and he drank the water from it. Oh, wait. Did someone send you this? On my mum's life, no one sent me this. Well, it was... He eats the dates from the calendar and drinks water from the springs of the bed. My bread was... My my answer's even better than the original. Yeah. How the fuck did you get that? Because I'm just on a different level. Wow. Okay. Well, then I've got another question for you. Mm. If you could walk into a room and you could see everyone that hates you, would you walk in? Fuck no, bro. Because, it, why? Oh, fuck <laughs> no, that'd be a big room, bro. God, it'd be a big room. I honestly don't think anyone would be in my room. Shut up. No, on. no, I swear to God. I swear to God. Maybe Cat Clark. <laughs> You'd be in her room. I can fucking promise you that. Yeah, fucking know. There's not a world where I'd walk into that room. Imagine my mum was there. I know. No, I'm walking in and I don't reckon I'd see a single person. You would. See, because I just, you just know there's going to be- G-Flip. G-Flip. You just know me. there's going to be someone in there that you <laughs> thought you were friends me. with, I reckon. Sorry? I reckon everyone would have someone when you walk in. There's someone in there that you thought you were kind of friends with and they're going to be in there. I'd love you? to know it. I wouldn't, bro. Who'd be in my room? Fuck. Imagine one of the people in here. Like, I, I just imagine. reckon it'd be crazy. Imagine, imagine this is the room. 
Oh. Imagine right now someone comes out and they're like, this is the room. Why is it then that I would want to fuck every single person 20 times more? I bet like, you hate me. I want you now. But you wouldn't do it. What do you mean I wouldn't like do it? You wouldn't fuck them up. Like the idea of it would be great, but you wouldn't actually do it. For everyone keeping track, for everyone interested, uh, I said that I was going to go and see a movie of mine, which was going to be in my top three most anticipated of the year. It was Cocoon. in my top three. Coc you remembered? Yeah, Cocoon. Wow. And French, I went French film, wasn't it? Nope. No. I thought it was French. Yes, yeah. you did. Or you might be confusing it with the French shark film that I told you to watch that came out on Netflix. No. Anyway, I went and saw it at the Sydney Film Festival. Let me say this first of all, the kind of people you see at film festival screenings are next level. Fucking You yuck. would hate them, bruh. 100% I would. Hugo Weaving was there Don't from Lord of the is. Rings. I know who that is. Yeah, of course, but anyway, some people Well, that's might. pretty cool if he's in Lord of the Rings. Anyway, yeah, he, he was Elrond in Lord of the Rings. I don't know who that is. An Were there any like act, like sick actors? <clears throat> no, but anyway, we we I go in there, Bruh, One thing that's got to stop. There are ushers. Where is it? Uh, I was at Palace Central Cinemas in Broadway. Okay. There are ushers that try and like usher people in and out of the theatre, but they actually just make things way more to make things like smoother. Yeah, yeah. But they yeah. end up making things way more difficult. difficult. And this one usher took his job so seriously, like he must have been specked out. Yeah. And he um takes one to no one. Hundred. He's like someone's like getting up, and he goes, oh, and he to, to go across the screen. No, he like fuck off. Press my God, he like dives onto the floor <laughs> on his stomach and starts like crawling, like, like, like commando crawling, like over, and then like taps the person and like brings them down. To the, the, the patron watching the movie was like, "The fuck!" I was just gonna walk across. The patron's like half committing to this crawl, and he's got this flashlight out, and he's like, and he's like ushering him at like that. Just causes more of a scene. No, I know. I, that's what I was watching the whole time. How big is the cinema? You can't get lost. It in was a, a tiny cinema. cinema. It was like sixty. You got an exit sign in the corner. You know where you came in. You go out. I know. Simple process, and I don't even go to the cinema, and I know this. I gave the movie a nine out of ten. Wow. Jordan gave the movie a three out of ten. So it was so polarizing. Okay. It's not for everyone. What was it about again? It's about a girl that moves to a resort with her family, um, and these really creepy, strange things start happening. It's not par it's not paranormal, um, and like I, I showed you the trailer. It's with Hunter Schaefer, but she moves to a thing at a resort, and yeah, it's like it's a horror movie. Oh, sick! And it's like a mystery sort of. All right, how long would it take to d as you as as we do? How long of a drive would it take to get over the movie? I'm still it? getting over it. Oh, fuck. I'd no. say three to four days. Almost Perth and back. Yeah, you'd have to drive to Perth and back to get it out. Wow. Of yeah. That's huge. It was massive. Fucking oaf. It was really, really big. And I'm really proud of myself. And I'm also proud of myself for waking up early today because we went on a walk. We did. We went on a nice walk. We did Chloe to Bondi and back. And then a little swim down at Chloe. Then we went for lunch at EQ. I it just was really feel fucking nice. Maybe that's why I'm like you were saying. Obviously, I'm in my spectrum era. Have you said that yet? No, I'm not saying you're in your spectrum era. <laughs> do I don't mean? think you go through eras of autism. This is very heightened today. I think because I'm happy. Hopefully, that continues. Maybe it doesn't. I hope it continues. Thank you, Pat. Let's tone it down a bit. No, I'm joking, bro. It's a joke. Relax. Let's do the hotline. Katie from Queensland, can't wait to see you boys at the Brisbane show, love you. I just wanted to raise a concern that I'm finding and it is the way that Pat talks. Fucking love you, Pat, my bra. Some of the words that you say and the way you pronounce them, I know you've had a speech impediment, I've been there too, yeah, bra. I've had I had a speech, had impediment. speech pathology in school. I couldn't say choo-choo train. Been there, done that, on the road to recovery. But some of the words you say, even you will, like sometimes you guys just fucking... Enunciate fucking some of the vowels differently. And it's just like, well, give us an example. Me. And I just wonder if people at home are listening going, oh my god, that's so funny. Like, it gives me a laugh. No, no hate, no hate. Anyway, can't wait to see you in Brisbane. I book both shows because I'm a fucking true fan. All right, you're a sick Anyway, cat. let's go. Well, good on you, someone who also struggled with a speech impediment going along and then judging others when they apparently overcome <laughs> theirs. I mean, you say that you've overcome yours, but you still sound fucked. So, I don't know, maybe you might want to go back to speech impediment classes. Um, but A few examples would have been nice. Yeah. 
But you know what? Thank you for being judgy, and that uh, really means a lot. How's this for a pronunciation? Fuck off. No, we'll see you in Brisbane, though. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. We love the pod. Okay. <laughs> Just want to add on to what that girl was saying about Will style. We don't think Pat's or Jesse no. at all because... Your style is very questionable. Yeah. <laughs> um, we recommend, Will, that you get some jorts and some burks because we just think you'd look so Yuck. good. Yeah, you would look so no. good. No, yuck. And um, as an add-on, we know you guys really don't like Fred again, but what about Dom Dollar? Surely you like him. <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> Love yeah. you guys. Love you. Fuck Bye. Dom Dollar too. I don't know who Dom Dollar is. Daddy Dom. Fuck him too. Shit music. I don't know who Dom Dollar is, but... Yeah, successful uh, if DJ. Same, if it's the same thing, it's not for me, unfortunately. All that music can go fuck itself. Oh, wait, no, I know who Dom Dollar is. Yeah. Dom Dollar's a nice person. Well, I'm sure he's a great fucking person. Just shit music. The same thing as Fred. We've already said this. Mm. Know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Didn't go. Oh, I'm not even going to get into it. Oh but I've, <laughs> I was not. You know where I was going, right? Yes. I um. I've put myself on a Zach Bryan ban. Not listening to Zach Bryan until his new album comes out. Oh. A little treat to myself. I want to make an announcement. Mm -hmm. Pat and I have been asked to perform at Lost not Paradise. Not to perform. <laughs> We're not performing at Lost Paradise. Yeah, we are. We're not a DJ there. We're performing at Lost Paradise, potentially. Yeah. Which so, could be my worst nightmare. Oh, we're driving there and driving back. Instantly. I can guarantee you I'm not staying a single night with those fucking losers that spend their time there. But... You know what? If that's for you, 100%. Just don't talk to me or anything. <laughs> well, at least listen to us when we're there. Yeah, no, 100%. I'll literally, I may as well speak to a wall for 25 minutes or however long we do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it's going to be, but it could be fucked. But yeah, I'm on a Zach Bryan band till his album comes out. I've been listening to like... Dude, because all I've listened to is Zach Bryan for so long. And now I'm going back into my liked songs and some old bangers are coming up. I like Tones and like I, I'm just going to say it. I like Tones and I. I like Tones and I, and congrats on the glow up, babe. You're a full 10. <laughs> Post Malone's been played a lot. Olivia? A little bit of... Uh, I'm really... She's really... You just oh, know. come on. I love her. I love her music. It's just... Uh, it's just a little bit fucked at the moment. So American. We're going so through a little rough patch, me and old Liv. Break up era. No, no, no. no still in love, but maybe on a break. And we oh. all know how that ends. We all know how a break ends. Love the podcast. Um, I'm just watching episode 117, and I'd like to inform you that Will Gibb is wrong. Grey sweatpants are actually the most bloodiest thing that a man can wear. And um, when is the we'll shopping date happening today. soon? Thanks, bye. When is the what happening soon? Shopping date. Uh, well, the shopping date's not happening because I'm getting slandered for my fucking... Can I just say, I turn up here in my pyjamas almost. What Will wears is Will's everyday outfits. No, this is my pajamas. But you wear that out every day. Yeah. So I'd love the shopping date to happen soon, but I don't think it's going to happen. The shopping date will happen soon. Okay, there you go. Hey boys, um, uh, need to take some action here because you guys have really truly made you feel made yourselves feel nice and welcome at your new studio because for the third episode in the row of the Hello Sport podcast, I've had to listen to those old farts, Tom and Eddie, <gasps> say, let's oge. Oh. Like, what the fuck? Whoa. Wow. To stop that. Does not sound right. Ooh. They sound like fuckwits. Ooh. And, oh, my yeah. God. But let's oge. Love you guys. <gasps> Tom and Eddie just got slandered. slandered. Absolutely, Absolutely slandered. Absolutely slandered for saying let's oge on your podcast. You say let's oge. They just said two old farts saying let's <laughs> oge. <laughs> they cunt. said go fuck yourself They said fuck that cunt you're ugly And <laughs> they've banned you from all forms of Hello Sport Media <laughs> And Tom's crying So good on you Lads, hope you're doing well uh, I was at the Melbourne show with my girlfriend We met you guys after Rag. It was a life goal fulfilled But uh, man, it was an awesome show Very entertaining, appreciate you guys putting it on just want to bring a little bit of positivity mm. onto the pod. Uh, I'm really proud of you guys, and I, I hope you guys are, are proud of yourselves as well, of, of what you've achieved, of what you've made. Uh, you know, myself and many others love taking an hour out of our, two hours out of our week to listen. And, man, you make the days just a little bit brighter. So appreciate you guys. Keep it up. 
And uh, yeah, see ya. Find him. Wow, find him. Find that find man. Find that man. Put him in every school in Australia. Get him to do talks. Tell him to teach other straight men how to act. What a beautiful what man. What a fuck. That warmed the soul. Jer- jelly roll vibes. You know what I'm saying? Jelly roll vibes. He's yeah. jelly roll vibes. And to answer your question, I'm not proud of myself. I never have been and I never will be until I'm at the top. So you find a thank man. Thank you. But thank you, bro. You're well, an actual be at the bottom. Guy. I'm the dude with the, with the Siri phone call guy, you know, uh, where it popped up near the coach and down oh, that you guy. It on a bit. Yeah, it just happened again because it's because of you, Pat. Like I didn't get a car, didn't nearly get in the car accident this time, but it, just, it happened again. And um, please stop saying "Hey Siri" on podcast because it pops up hey, on my Siri. phone and makes you look at my phone while driving. Something that you you're used to, Pat, because I heard you like to look at your phone a lot. So yeah, go fuck yourself, Pat. <laughs> Sorry. Hey Siri, call Kate. I hope Kate's your ex your ex girlfriend. Fuck no, there's not a Kate in my contacts. Um, guys, thank you so much for listening. Please send us. Please send me cookies, lollies, chocolates. Send it all to him, bro. I'm not eating it in case it's poison. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh my god. What? There could be some cunt who hates us. All right. Be up all night shitting. <laughs> thank you very much for listening. Uh, we're in Sydney soon. There's a couple last little tickets. We're in left. Brisbane on Sunday, but yeah, I think it's sold out. Spewing. Um, yeah, there are some tickets. I got tickets two more tickets Sydney. though to give away to the Brisbane show. Oh, g- give him one last plea. Do I do it? Go, go desperate. Get on no, your no, knees. No, no, I'm not going to give one last plea here. I was thinking of giving one last plea on my Insta story. No, that's fucked. <laughs> that is fucked. Because at least this could be played off humorous. Your Insta story is a bit fucked. All right. And he won't even see it because he didn't follow well, He's you not going to hear this or see this. So there's no point. But if you know a Noah up in Brisbane and you're from there, just tell him that um, I felt something when I met him. I felt a spark. <sighs> Why the fuck are you cringing, Kyle, you fuckwit? Because it's cringe, bro. Fuck's wrong with you, mate. You got something to say? Say it. Go on. You don't like gay love. You don't like me. What's the vibe? Come on. No, I got nothing. Yeah, that's what I fucking thought, I back Kyle. You. Thank I you. I hope he does respond. Positivity. What do you want to say, you fucking chirpy cunt? <laughs> Mate, fuck you for starters. You've been a little cunt today. I haven't been a little cunt. I've been happy. I, mean, sh- you, 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 I want to say I, I, I hope he doesn't reply. What the hell? And there's reasoning for this. Because if I was keen on someone, I wouldn't be waiting three days to message them. So if he does message you, you're going to get your hopes up so high. And I think he's maybe not that keen and it could fall through again. And you deserve a man who's going to fucking respond to you when you want. No, I don't. I reckon every, you know, I want every 10 minute replies type shit. You know what I mean? You deserve that. So I think for your own sake, I hope he doesn't reply. Noah, if you want to live a life where oh my God. you're happy oh my God. and you never have to work a day in your life, <laughs> I'm here. That's all. That's all. All I ask in return is that, I don't know. Say it. I, you, there was something in your mind. I know what you're going. I know the path you're going. <laughs> it's gonna be something fucked. Like you get a surgery, so you can't shit out of your asshole or something. So it's always clean or some shit. Like oh, that. God, that was fucked up. No, guys, have it tough, bro. You got a douche. Rich to you, sex. bro. You're dealing with fucking bleeding pussy. Yuck. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but like you up. have to clean it before you have sex. Girls have to do that. No, they don't. What girls don't clean their vag. Yeah, well, like they would just wash it Sorry, in the shower. Sorry, mate, let me tell you something. But don't your you sister have to and douche? your mum and your other sister, they're cleaning their vaggers in the shower. But don't you have to douche before sex? I'm, I'm not having a go. I'm saying it's actually a bit fucked. It's heavy. It's not heavy. It's not a bit fucked. It's just, you could, you know what? You should try douching. It's actually quite relaxing. Maybe you won't get, <laughs> What? Maybe you won't be riddled with anxiety all the fucking time if you douched your ass. Well, because i got a clean right. ass. Yeah, it just feels nice. You feel pure. You feel refreshed. Not whatever the fuck you are, What's mate. It, what do you do? You take the little, it's like a little ball thing and you, yeah, and you, I know and that. you squirt like then, a kind of lukewarm water and you let it sit there for like one or two minutes. So you take it out, you take the ball out and you let the water just linger in your bum. You let it sit for like, yeah, because if you just do it straight away, or also you have to have like, you can't have like, you can't um have shit up there either. 
Because if you haven't you go, taken you, a so poo, you, you take a you shit, you it. have a shower, then you douche. I I take a shit and then I will. Surely douche. you wash it before you douche. No, I'll, I'll wash after. I'll wash the shower. I'll have a shower after douching. But you wipe. Hundred yeah. percent, I wipe. Cunt. Bro. Fuck me. Making sure. No, fuck me. I wipe. <laughs> All right, fuck me. Oh, see that's you guys. a great shirt. Oh, I'm going to make a shirt that says, fuck me, I wipe. Yeah, heaps of people will buy it again. That's funny. All right. Whatever. Seeing the bean spillers. Love you guys. Myself.